Hey everybody, Life Train, you're good. This is Beat for One Beat Games, and welcome back to our feature presentation of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All for the Nintendo DS. Uh, last time, it's been about a few days actually since we last played this, but last time we went ahead and gathered all the information we needed for the final trial, for the finale, I should say, the final part, part four, which is what we're going to start now. I plan to continue to finish this in one sitting. I don't care how long it takes. Hopefully it'll take at least two hours. Well, I, I should say at most two hours so that we can finish that and we can move on. And uh, anyway, yeah, let's just get started. Huh. Huh. Ah, how did I get into this mess? Not far enough. You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. <gasps> Nani, but, but I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. Deja vu, dude. Deja freaking vu. I've had this dream before. Some place, some time ago. As if this day was written into my destiny. Today, I'll stand in court as a lawyer. To prove a killer innocent. March 23rd, 9.43 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. The phone went off again like last time, too. Interesting. Hello, this is Phoenix Wright. You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? <laughs> ah, there it is. <laughs> If you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on today's verdict, too. Ah! Now listen up! You better get on guard and guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you! Ever! Maya. Phoenix! Phoenix! Are, oh, Mia! Maya, how's Maya? I don't know. No, oh, you, you don't know? Oh, wait, hold on. Let me close, move to, there we go. She hasn't tried to challenge me since yesterday. Mia, what, what am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of times are when you have to fit, force your biggest smiles. But, oh, uh, no. Okay, I think I might have to restart my computer. Hold on, give me a sec. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. I had to go ahead and restart the computer, kind of clean up the things. So I don't, I don't like the fact that it was lagging a bit like that. But anyway, um, oh, oh, whoa, excuse me, that, oh, that oatmeal came back up, Ooh, just a bit. But you can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please. There's nothing left. Not here. Not anywhere. Ah, I said I curse it on guard again. Will you leave me alone? Look, don't call me anymore. I mean it. You're really mean, pal. Ah, Gumshoe. I'm really, really sorry. Where are you? They let me join the investigation team and we're chasing after the killer, pal. <gasps> then you have some sort of lead? Sorry, but right now we've got zero leads on the guy. But we're not going to give up. Gumshoe. Until the trial is over. Until the verdict is handed down. We're going to do everything we can to find the killer. If we can get Maya out, then you can get on guard the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. That's true. I could do that if they found Maya first. You got that? So you have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. Ah, oh, shoot. You have to make the trial last longer? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. If you got Mr. Edgeworth for everything you got, then you two can draw it out. Oh, you're right. Oh, now I get it. I believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Edgeworth can do it. So... Believe in us. We're going to give it all, all we've got, just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. I don't know why I was trying to think of the Japanese version of that. I don't even know too much. I don't even know that much Japanese. Damn it. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? 
You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. It's the strongest weapon in the world, and you have it in abundance. Yeah! Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through. I know it! March 23rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. I'm so nervous. Whew! Court is now in session for the trial of men on guard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. <laughs> now, as I recall, we concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being what exactly was Miss Adrian Andrews' role in the murder. That is to say, is she really connected to crime itself? Mr. Edward, if you would please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. Ungard. And then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. The guilt of these actions are from are those from which she cannot escape. Hmm. Then you're saying she's then you're saying that she is guilty after all. I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? It looks like a shell. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. Assassin, you say? Yes, Juan Carita was killed by a professional assassin. And the person who hired the assassin, his client so to speak, is Matt on guard. What a surprising turn of events! <laughs> I would think it's become commonplace by now, your honor. I know what's going on this time, so I know that everything Edgeworth has said is true. But we still have to hold out as long as we can, at least until my is safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the, de the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Ah, Willie, my boy. Now then, witness, your name and occupation, please. Uh, okay. I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor, underpaid actress, action star. And what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's... I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him, in a way... Yeah. Um, Mr. Powers, please, you don't need to put yourself down so much. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, but I'm just kind of a nothing sort of guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. Is this correct? Yes. I didn't know that. Um, but you know, I didn't actually get to see Matt when I went in. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then, I would like you to test the police testify about when you went to Mr. Ungard's room. Oh, okay, sure. Uh-oh. Willie, my boy, please. I'm scared. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. He was talking with someone. At first, I thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. Mmm, so that's what he was doing. Mm. Nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Power's testimony. And talking with the bellboy is no big deal. If one assumes that the person Mr. Ungar was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy, what are you implying? <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Huh? A trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? What the rock's cooking? But for us to find out more, we're just going to have to charge hen uh, charge in head first, right? What you cooking, Edgeworth? The defendant's room? Why did you go there? Well, I'm his mentor, like a big brother sort of, and I wanted to say congrats. Uh-oh. What's wrong? Why did you suddenly stop? M Mr. Wright! W what is it? You... You're going to try to trick me into a corner, aren't you? Ah, uh, huh? I, I know I'm just a poor underpaid action star, but... But I... I'm not the killer! Um, no one said your word, Mr. Powers. No, please, don't trick me. Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into the bad guy. Every time? Witness? 
I will personally talk to the, def to the defense at a later time. So for now, please kindly cooperate and continue with your testimony. Sorry. <laughs> well, please! So you went to the defendant's room and then... Hey, wait a minute! What in hell did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? God... God bless. Are you sure that was Matt on guard? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the Nickel Samurai Max then. If that's the case, then he really can't be mistaken. And? What was the defendant doing standing in front of his own room? He was talking. Duh. At first, what do you mean by that? Well, he was in a bellboyish uniform and had a bottle of juice on a tray. Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Um, yeah, but I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Sorry, but I can't remember right now. Sorry. I guess I'm gonna have to wait patiently on this one. That's fine. You saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant, together, correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. Now, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? But that's a perfectly normal thing to do. So, how long did you watch the two of them? Ah, uh, no more than a minute or two, I think. Oh, well. Oh, that's right. So who are these guests you're talking about? <laughs> you guys, of course. You and my and Little Pearl. I thought it would be really rude since I invited you guys if I disappeared on you. So I went back to my seat pretty soon after seeing Matt in the hallway. This is like squeezing water from a stone. <laughs> what would you... How would that even... Okay, it's probably pointless to press further. Do you remember this incident? Did Mr. Powers leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. Maya was making such a racket in her hyperstate. I ended up focusing on her. I see. In any case, from his story, he probably wasn't gone for very long. Uh... Ah, oh, hell no. What? Okay. Let me check the stuff. I didn't know we were doing this already. Uh... I'm not even sure what would be here. This part, let me press this again. Oh, whoa, 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 why, why am I not allowed to skip that? Why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Hey, wait a second. Yeah, I was gonna say, why did it, it didn't let me skip it? What? Actually, Mr. Powers, only a few minutes ago you stated... Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip-giving incident itself? Ah! Yeah, that's it. You really know You really know your job. I, I was so confused. I was like, what's going on? I can't skip it? Is it new dialogue? And then, blammo, new dialogue. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, your honor. This bellboy. He wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Hmm, <laughs> took you this long, huh? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You mean about the bellboy, right? Matt gave the bellboy a tip. <laughs> Oh, what a statement! <laughs> I physically clicked, damn it! I tried to click without paying attention. <laughs> so we gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Ah, well, you see, Matt's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. Oh, how much it was? But that's when something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got in his pocket. And that's when I got my first good look at it, at the guy's face. Yeah, I was really shocked. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't follow at all. 
It sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by this event. I wonder which of his shocking moments I should ask about. How about we save first? Huh? Comprende? How about we do the tip first? I think we can come back and do the other one. Not it. The defendant is a huge star. He can afford to give generous tips, wouldn't you agree? I'm um, sure. But giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much? Would you please clarify for the court about how much you would you, would you say the defendant gave to the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. And why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really... Really fat roll of cash. A roll of cash! Ah, uh, well, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? A very fat roll of cash. That can hardly be called a tip, Your Honor. Hmm. It does begin to look awfully suspicious of us. Ah! Maybe I should have done the other thing. Crap. I don't want to save over this. I should probably just save state. <laughs> save state. What's the point of raising objection though? Should I just... There's nothing I can really object here. I mean, who can argue that a fair roll of money isn't rather really odd? Hmm, so supposing that roll of cash was not a tip. Then what was it? Payment, Your Honor. <gasps> Payment? Oh, maybe you should have went ahead and raised an objection after all. Isn't it obvious? For the murder of Mr. Juan Carita. Then... Then this bellboy would win us all. Yes, he was the assassin. Hold your horses now. Mr. Edgeworth, you don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honor? I have here the card Shelly the Killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelly the Killer? He is the person the police's special investigations team has been chasing for ages. I am certain that the person the witness saw was his very assassin, Shelly the Killer! B really What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just clicked in my head and I think I just figured something out. Oh? Actually, I saw that bowboy again later that on that night. What? Yeah, you were there too. Did you forget? You forgot, didn't you? Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Right away. So maybe, maybe it was a good thing I said and wait and see. I don't know. This time, I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when that bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Carrito's room. What? Now that I think about it, that boy boy did seem kind of, kind of out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. I mean... Huh. You know, I want to see something. I, I want to see something really quick, so I'm gonna... Save over the last save state, and then I'm gonna reset the ROM, and I'm gonna see what happens when we... I said reset the ROM. Thank you. I want to see what happens when we choose the other thing, the other option. Like the bellboy's face. What was so shocking about the bellboy's face, Mr. Powers? Well, he wasn't exactly a boy, more like an old Gramps. <clears throat> I hope you know that discrimination towards an old man is a no-no in my country. I'm at court. <laughs> country. No, no, that's not what I meant at all. In the smack middle of the guy's face, there was a line of stitches. A line of stitches? Yeah, and it went straight from the tippy top of his head to the bottom on his chinny chin chin. Almost like that if that thread snapped, all the stuff in his head would come spilling out. Ah! He was there, and on guard's house. He was that butler! What is it, Mr. Wright? Ah, uh, uh, nothing, your honor. So that means on guard was talking with a killer then. If that fact were to be exposed, Ongar would be declared guilty in a blink. Phoenix, you have to wait down here. Pretend you don't know anything. Yes, Chief. 
You sure you don't have something you would like to say, Mr. Wright? Huh? Um, what did you just say, Your Honor? <laughs> <laughs> nothing, Mr. Wright, nothing. We're just going around in, cir around in circles. Now then, Mr. Powers, please continue with your testimony. Ah, okay, I understand now. So, practically, if I should... Okay, so the second answer was the right answer. Okay, so let's just go back to where we are now. Thank you very much. That is all we need for now. Huh? But I'm not done. There's still more. Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. Day Killer. Then we shall see. Hmm. So the bellboy came out of the victim's room. And if that bellboy really was the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. Ha 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 ha! This is no laughing matter. I'm not laughing, I'm joking. Jeez. Wait, what? Wait. I'm not laughing, I'm joking. What? I'm pretending to laugh is what I'm trying to say. I. Huh, and what time was it? Adventure time? No. Ah, well, I don't remember. The award ceremony ended around 8 p.m., right? And I went to match room pretty soon after that. And then I came back. And then I went to the bathroom. So I guess maybe it was around 8.10 by that time. You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Powers? So sorry. I thought I could maybe catch men and say my congrats. Are you sure it was the same bellboy? Yeah. And how could you tell? All the bellboys wear the same uniform after all. But you see, well, he had those stitches in his face. Ugh. So I'm sure it's the same guy that was talking with Matt. Hmm. So which room did the bellboy come out of? The victim's room, huh? Yeah, the one with all the really pretty flowers and teddy bears. It was Juan's room, all right. Words cannot describe how screwed I am. Hmm. Let's continue with the testimony, shall we? Um, so what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why the insipid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what damage you think he's gonna say next? Um, well, the bubble was empty-handed. Empty-handed? That bellboy was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart and he wasn't holding a tray either. You'd call that a little strange too, wouldn't you? Hmm. I agree that it is a little a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers' testimony slide, or... Let's try to pull a fast one. Technically... There was juice there. Let's let it for now. You're right. I think it's pretty unusual too. Ah, I thought you might think so. Hmm. Heh. <laughs> There's no need to say anything when the defense gives up without a fight. Let's move on. Anyway, Mr. Powers, you thought the bubble was a little suspicious, correct? Let me actually go back and try it again. I know. <laughs> they, they seem disappointed I didn't say anything, so let me, let, me, let me go back here. See, I can do this. There is nothing strange or unusual about an, uh, an empty handed bellboy. But well, there really, really is. There really, really isn't! Oh, yeah, this is for wasting time. If you two are done being school children, bellboys are for room service. There is no reason for them to be empty handed, ever. Your Honor, I ask that the witness' previous statement be sub supplanted with this new one. Ah, Edgeworth. Are you going to do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious? I see. Very well. This court recognizes the grants of prosecutor's request. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please. D yes, sir. Well, I, let me, well, I, I guess it's because... He's supposed to have to trade with them, right? So are you saying that it's suspicious for him to be empty-handed? Yeah, really suspicious. I mean, when I first saw that bellboy, he was holding a tray in his hand, and there was a bottle of juice and a wine glass on it. 
Juice. What kind of juice was it? Um, I'm pretty sure it was tomato juice. Oh, excuse me. If we could come up with some so, with some sort of reason as to why he would come out empty-handed, some sort of proof, then I think we could dodge a bullet on this one for now. Proof, huh? Sounds like another job for the court record. Good thing I do have some proof. I think I need the wine glass. Yep. Mr. Powers. Did you guess? You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that the bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but, isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches and, and... So, a baseball has stitches? Are you saying that all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? <laughs> well, there's also... I mean, what about him being empty-handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. The tray's literally right there in the bottom right. This is... the crime scene. There is a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Corita's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what is on the top of the table in the lower right corner here... Ba-bang! Anyone could clearly see that is... Ugh, damn it. Anyone could clearly see that it is a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Corita's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. Ah! But... but nothing! But that would mean... wait... That would mean that the bellboy had seen and left of their body in the room. Mm -hmm. Ah, but can you prove that Mr. Creator was already dead at that time? Uh, Mr. Edward! <laughs> yes. <laughs> I blame you for leaving me down this route. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes! Yes! He finally, finally blaming someone else instead of us. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? I'm laughing. Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? Is there? The bellboy was empty handed. Or should I say empty hand and? I recall you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Huh? But what? Not any sort of. The bellboy. He was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch black leather ones. Oh. Oh, number 47 type gloves, huh? Ooh, speaking of which, I really gotta let's play Hitman sometime soon. I have the entire series. Like, Hitman, well, the HD collection. And then the, the, one, the one that came out in, like, 2013, 2014, Absolution. Whenever that came out, 2012, I have that too. So eventually we're gonna let's play that series. Um, yeah, perch black leather ones. All the other bellboys didn't wear, don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves. Why didn't you mention them earlier? So sorry, it slipped my mind. Well, I'm about to take a break really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. There you go. Okay. So sorry, it slipped my mind. Ah, boy, does this make the bellboy look really suspicious. Alright, got the focus. I can't get lights here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright. That bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So, a football is made of leather. Are you saying that all footballs are just because they are made of leather? <laughs> oh my goodness. But that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I just, I don't think that uh, even someone like myself could believe it was just another bellboy. Ugh. It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. Okay. Oh, there's more. There's always more. But this is good. This is for. This is not for our detriment. This is towards our progression. You know, this is good because we're stalling in a way, even though this is damaging us. But. <laughs> After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door, just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. And then the old guy just left, without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. 
<laughs> no, excuse me. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room? Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident? I say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, your honor. Aye, aye, aye. Who's their second meeting? Just the mic. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Mic testo, mic testo. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on my door just like that. Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? Uh, excuse me? I may be a poor underpaid action star, but even I wouldn't stoop to spying. Well, I think the point is, where did you watch all this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, um, from the door of the bathroom in my left eye, and a sort of sticky spy-like... Haha, uh -huh, I knew he was spying! Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over, over or underhandedly? What did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. Oh, it does matter. Come on now. It does matter. I said, hold it. <laughs> What's up? What do you know this? What are you doing? I just. Um, okay. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Oh my goodness, if this ain't the most freaking, oh my god, no, this has got to be the best stall I've ever seen in my life. This man is <laughs> trying to stop the heart. <laughs> oh my god, that's better. <laughs> what kind of statement is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Please elaborate and give us another detail. Oh, I clicked out now. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, uh, um, okay. <laughs> I should probably ask him only one question at a time. Oh, so we can keep going. Cool. Uh, ask about the person inside. So who took this something that Bullet Boy handed off? Oh, I clicked out a freaking, uh, what the hell is this called again? Um, Audacity. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I clicked on Audacity back so. Um, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. What did an arm look like? Only an arm? Then you're saying you didn't see the person's face? Yeah. Well, it was Mr. Ongar's room, correct? So it could have only been Mr. Ongar himself, I'd say. And then, what did the bellboy do after that? Oh, so after he gave the person inside the room the thing... The thingy thing thing... Not even going into the room. Well, there is something else we gotta do here. How about we keep going with this and see what happens? Where did this bellboy go after he left Mr. On Guard's room? Hmm, he opened the door to Viola Hall. Went in there, and who knows after that, right? Yeah, I do. Me too. Did you see anything strange, suspicious, or just out of the ordinary at the time? Oh yeah, I saw that one thing. What? You saw something else? There was this jittery alien with a ray gun. <laughs> and it was watching Juan's door like some sort of stalker. Huh? Um, I think we can forget about the alien. Well, Mr. Powers' testimony just now was just as vague as his first. It's a little troublesome, isn't it? But I'm sure if you press him enough, everything will become clearer. Although, that just makes it harder on us, doesn't it? Ugh, talk about a lose-lose situation. So yeah, this, uh, we gotta do the second thing. Uh, my contestant, my contestant. God, stop. God bless. Uh, ask about this something. He gave something to this person. Yeah. And what was this something? Ha ha ha. If I remembered what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a something, would I? 
Well, this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. <gasps> I would like to summarize this testament up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. <laughs> there, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. Uh, as for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. <laughs> yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Hedgeworth, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of the most important. This is when whenever it was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was that, that what it was that Bobo handed off. Um, well, let's see. Hmm, I think it was no. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Yes, sir. If I saw it again, I could say for sure, but I think it was some sort of wooden statue. What? Oh, is it this? Oh, it's gotta be this! Oh my god! A statue? Yeah, it kinda looked like one, I guess. If I saw the actual thing again, I'd probably remember, you know? Looks like for this trial to proceed, I'm going to have to come up with whatever this statue thing is and show it to him. You're going to have to trust in your instinct on this one and take a chance, Phoenix. Well, Mr. Powers, let's continue with your testimony. What did the bellboy do after that? Oh, well... <laughs> it looks like even she knew exactly what I was thinking. THAT THING! Alright. Not this guy. Say something! <laughs> I'm off with the point of the pregnant prose! Where did our objection come from? Well, speak up! Uh, it was me, your honor. <laughs> what is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Oh, I'm gonna go call. Un momento, por favor. Michael Testo, Michael Testo. Okay, we're back. So. I have a bad feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. D yes, Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix. Deep breath. <sighs> Mr. Powers, the something you saw... Was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it. That's the something. Wow, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out. Hmm, I recall we found this at Madame Guard's mansion. At the, the, the defendant's house? No, I don't know what you're talking about. What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Like you. <laughs> that was kind of mean, Edgeworth. I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. Uh, Shall the killer assassinated Juan Carita in his room? And then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then the bear being found in Mr. Guard's mansion would mean. It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Man on Guard is the killer's client. Order, order, order! I said, oh, oh, oh. Mr. Wright, this is a most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's all right. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would have. Ah, I almost forgot that he knew about it too. He literally just said that. I think it is clear that there is there's no more no need for us to continue this trial. I I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Wright. There are still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. No, we can't. Not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 Oh my goodness. Okay, thank goodness for them giving me that safe point, because I'm afraid. Oh, well, we can't have that. Alright, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? 